The Chargers are up 27-0. There's no way they're going to lose this. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Wash Athlete Podcast and another episode of This Week in Sports. We are the Wash Athlete Podcast. We are a group of college guys at the University of Pittsburgh, and pretty much on this podcast, we cover our interests in daily lives. This episode specifically is regarded to sports, and we are not covering any sports today besides the NFL because the NFL season is heating up. So if you like this, drop a like, subscribe. It really helps us a lot as we try to grow this channel. And we're just going to get right into it. No NBA, nothing else. We're just going to do football and run down the game, the week of games. So we'll talk about some previous games because there's a lot to talk about. And I think where we talk about first is the Jaguars overcoming a 27-0 deficit against the um, the Chargers. Like, I, wow. I am honestly, like, at this point, the Chargers are just the new Falcons. I don't know how they managed to do it. I don't know what curse this team has because – they looked unstoppable in the first half. They, they had five turn. They have a five zero turnover ratio in the first half, and they lost the game. Like Justin Herbert was lighting it up. The defense looked amazing, and somehow, some way, they managed to put up three points in the second half when they've just put up twenty seven in the first. Mm-hmm. I don't yeah. understand how they did. It. I think Melvin Gordon cursed the Chargers before he left. <laughs> <laughs> had to be it. I'm honestly, I'm not sure how that happened. I mean, I saw I mean, you guys remember the Colts game. Yes. Like, yeah. I yeah. was like, surely there's no surely. way. <laughs> surely no way. And then it's the playoffs. So you're also thinking, yeah, of course, there's not going to be a yeah. chance. Yeah. I heard someone talking about it with the passing game of the NFL and saying kind of how like leads are not safe anymore because you can so electrically do- go down the field, get an 80 yard touchdown and break the game wide open. And that's like totally accurate because like we see 33, nothing is what the Vikings come back from earlier in the year with the Colts. And I mean, I, I was saying during the game, like, hey, like, the Jags might come back and win this. But, like, I wasn't like I was fully believing yeah. that. But, like, mm-hmm. there is a, the chance that, like, hey, you get a touchdown, you get a stop, and now you're within 13 and it's anyone's game just to have a league is. Like, all you got to do is get um, Christian Kirk, Rogers' favorite athlete, uh, <laughs> down the field for a bomb and suddenly get, game's tied. So it does not deserve wide out one money. <laughs> <laughs> so after the dramatic comeback now they're going in the face of chiefs which i feel like everyone thinks is a juggernaut and i was wondering you guys do you think the chiefs team is being slightly overrated i think it's going to be one of those things where like if the chiefs don't take the jags seriously i think they could go in there and punch them in the mouth um but again it is the chiefs so whatever lead the jags might have whatever edge they could have it's the chiefs they've done crazier with yeah. way less yeah. time Listen, so but Trevor Lawrence has never lost on a Saturday. He has he's, never lost. He's so, never uh, lost on a Saturday. Patrick Mahomes has never failed to make an AFC championship if he makes the playoffs. And Trevor, Trevor Lawrence, Lawrence has never, never lost, lost on, on a Saturday. Saturday. One of these streaks <laughs> yeah. will break. One of them will. <laughs> Which one is it? I have no idea. Because that game, it could really go either way. Because I could punch him in the mouth. But it's a Travis Etienne legacy game. It could be no. a Travis <laughs> Etienne legacy game. The Chiefs defense is not that good. Yeah, no, I honestly, like, they had Daniel Sorensen for years. Peter knows I hate <laughs> Dude, He's you so trash. hate that man with a passion. He's so trash. He would be on a team with Matt Nagy. But, <laughs> like, honestly, like, the Chiefs are good. Like, they're I mean, so good. They're really good, but, like, it doesn't seem like they have that many, like, guys. Like, they have, like, obviously, Pitt Mahomes, Kelsey. Okay. They have, like, like uh, Chris Jones, but, like, that's it. Yeah. Like, they don't have many guys, it's just, they're I, somehow good. It's like, just Andy Reid is, like, he's just dialing up plays that just, like, yeah. allows these players to just get in positions mm-hmm. to be able to do exactly what they do. Yeah. Well. well, even the defense. Like, the mm-hmm. defense can still well, yeah, somehow like they have Chris Jones, Jones. They have nobody. They're not, like, they're not really that good. They're ranked one North League. This is where I think, like, I think the Chiefs are going to win this game, don't get me wrong. But yeah. I think the Chiefs team is being a little bit overrated. Yeah. I saw the line open at eight and a half. I don't know what it is right now. But, That's like, kind of good I wouldn't. Like, the Jaguars' defense is not much better than the Chiefs' defense, if at all. And you could argue, like, positionally, the Jaguars just have as many weapons as the Chiefs on offense, except for the fact that Andy Reid is a better coach than Doug Peterson. Doug Peterson's a good coach, but Andy Reid is better. better. And Patrick Mahomes is the most talented quarterback who's ever lived. Like, those... Talented, yeah. Yeah, Yeah. those are, like, that is what's separating these two teams. I think this game's going to be, could be a lot closer. Now, I don't know what Trevor Lawrence was saying that he thinks that Jacksonville is louder than Arrowhead. He was saying that he doesn't. Uh, he, he that's was literally. Like, that's literally. Oh, that's yeah. literally. I think. I think he meant true. that. Like. Um, I think he meant that. Like from his like college days. Well, like he played in like the loudest state. I do. Think no, no. He, he said it would not be oh, as loud it? as Jacksonville. Oh, did he? Oh, then I have. What? Yeah, he's actually, yeah, it's, he's Cle- it's Clemson. So I don't know. It's Death Valley. So no, he, he was interviewing. They were like, oh, "Are you concerned about the noise in Kansas City?" He goes, "I don't know if it will be louder than Jacksonville." Okay, he's. Oh, okay. I mean, he's yeah. played in some loud stadiums. 
college. But no, like, but the fact that he said specifically, I thought, okay, Kansas City. I thought he was saying it was from his colleges. If he said specifically Jacksonville, then yeah, yeah. it's going to be louder than Jacksonville. I mean, that's just like didn't they literally have like the loudest like didn't they yeah. set the record? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it was like because it's like Death Valley because it's like in kind of like a bowl sort of. Yeah, like, no, I'm talking about uh, Kansas City. Oh, uh, they might have said they, they like might have broken Who? the Kansas City. I thought they broke. They like, might have the broken the record that the Seahawks had for a little. Yeah, bit. Yeah, they, no, the Kansas City broke the record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So then, um, yeah. so it's gonna be loud. I, I think this is the game that could. I think it's gonna be close. I don't think it'll get out of hand. I think the Chiefs win by like six or so points. What do you guys think? Yeah. I gotta think it's gonna be a shootout. No. That's gonna be close, well, but. It, Again, it's gonna be close, but I feel close. like it's gonna be a high scoring shootout. It yeah, might be. I, I hope it is because that would be, be crazy. Exciting. Are we overvaluing the Jaguars though? Like, they did just come back and beat the Chargers, but are we also like, but the Chargers? I don't think so. The really Jaguars, started... they looked really good. The Chargers look really good, like, they have better guys. I'd argue the Jacob, they came back from a 5 0 turnover deficit. I'd say they have better guys than the Chiefs, but the Chargers just fold. like, they're they just continue. Well, I understand the Chargers, but, fold, but coming out of that kind of deficit, no, I, I, I agree, that's impressive. But I still can't see the Jaguars. As someone who watched Doug Peter- as someone who watched Doug Peterson coach my football team for a couple of years, Doug Peterson is going to be uber aggressive in this game. Yeah, Doug Peterson coached the Cowboys. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that. Uh, cool. He's going to be super great. He'll go four on fourth and two in bad spots on the field just to put the pressure on the Chiefs. So I don't. That's fair. The Chiefs are going. There's going to be a couple plays in this game where the Chiefs are like hoping they'll punt the ball and they're going to give it back to Patrick Mahomes. Doug Peterson is going to go for it and they're going to convert and it's going to keep the Chiefs' offense off the field. So that, yeah. it's going to be like a. 24 30 game Chiefs win, but like they might have to rely on like their defense to make the final stop at the end of the game. That comes out of that. Right. <laughs> I don't know about that. It's on record. That, it's that, on that record. the exact score. All right. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> uh, moving on, Giants versus Eagles. And unfortunately, here we have a resident Giants fan and two yes. resident Eagles fans to break this Who's down. The one? Oh, yeah, because you're a Cowboys fan. You guys are the worst. Um, <laughs> Daniel Jones, huge game against the Vikings. Yes. Um, I mean, everyone's got to be feeling confident. He's co- coming up for a contract extension. It looks like he's going to get it. But this is – Daniel Jones is playing for the biggest win for the Giants in the last decade. Since yeah. 2012, you can't make an argument this – like, this is the most important yeah, game they could win since yeah. then. Yes, So, absolutely. like, J- Peter, thoughts? Well, first of all, I would like to just say uh, the Vikings were frauds all along. I think we've all kind of thought that. The fact that they were 11-0 and in one-score games and only beat the Giants, who were down two of their best defensive players on a 61-yard game-winning field goal two weeks before. Kind of telling. Uh, Brian Dable is an absolute god. I don't know how he's managed to create... Roll Tide. I don't know how he's managed <laughs> to create Josh Allen and that. Daniel Jones. <laughs> Trevor Lawrence is a better quarterback than anybody that's ever come out of Alabama. Um, but, um, but I like I think this was just like this last game against the Vikings. It was just a masterclass on how to expose a defense because what the uh, announcers were saying the entire game is that the Vikings have a problem with slant routes. They have a problem with the underneath routes where they have a clear out and the linebackers and safeties can't communicate. And that's all they threw the entire game yep. was these shorter routes that would cut through and they just ripped that defense apart. Saquon's back. Daniel Jones is playing like vanilla Vic. <laughs> Isaiah Hodgins should be getting paid 72 million. Um, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Isaiah Hodgins had eight catches, 105 yards and a touchdown. He was walking around with wide receiver one. He was, yeah. he was on the bills practice squad, got cut. They signed him. <laughs> and then he's looking like a better version of Kenny Galladay. Even though Kenny Galladay threw a seventy-two million dollar block last <laughs> during yeah, the game, I saw that was that legit. Was crazy. But um, but yeah, I think like here's my thing. Do I think the Giants are going to win? No, the Eagles are so unbelievably talented. It is hard to beat a team three times in a row, and the Giants are hot right now. Um, I think it's going to be more of like a slugfest. I'd say it's going to come down to like the defenses essentially. Mm-hmm. Like if you can contain Daniel Jones and Saquon Barkley, and you can get a pass rush going, you kind of you're you're gonna beat the Giants. Yeah, let's like, get a weather report real quick on this game. Is, um, oh, looking yeah. like a nice 43 and sunny, so it'll be it'll be a little cold, but it'll be a little cold. No but inclement conditions. Yeah, yeah, nothing. Yeah, nothing crazy there. As the but high, yeah. but it'll be a night game. But yeah, if you can stop the play action, you can stop the Giants. That's yeah. really what it's gonna come down to, and I think the Eagles' defense can do that. Um, I think that honestly, I think that the Giants' defense, now that we have everybody's gonna be healthy, I think they're gonna be able to put up a fight. Against the Eagles, but it's going to be a really, really hard challenge. Mm-hmm. How much is Daniel Jones supposed to be making? Like, this I have no idea because he's uh, he's a free agent this year because they declined his fifth year option. 
Um, but I, he doesn't seem like the kind of person that's going to be picking up like a really big contract yeah, because like he's sure. just like that kind of guy. Yeah, and like he like he he seems like he would take a more team friendly deal because it's like who else is going to? No, one, no one's going to pay yeah. exactly. No one's going to two hundred fifty million. You would yeah. you would just rather like Daniel Jones is good, and I think yeah. he should be the quarterback in, for the Giants for yeah. going forward. That being said, but no one else is going to really. If you have that. a top fifteen pick, you could just draft one of the young guys and hope they'll be yeah. Daniel Jones or better. Um, exactly. There's just no point in paying Daniel Jones a bunch of money when you could pay a rookie quarterback yeah. five million dollars. So like, there's no real like market yeah. value for him. So I think it's like he and I think he wants to stay with the Giants yeah. too. So it's more of just like a like we just need to figure. Also, it out. the Giants are going to take him back happily. So oh, yeah, I, I think absolutely. this is a this is a win win situation here. I, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. There's now no like conversations. He's proved himself. Yeah, yeah. There's no Jimmy G conversations. Like he'll, he'll be the starting quarterback of yeah. the Giants. Rod say at the start of the season. I think it was either you or Justin. One of you like said make a break here. For yeah, Daniel for Daniel Jones. Jones. Yeah. yeah, and he's he's made it. It probably was both of us, oh, honestly. Yeah. We said the same thing about Hurts. Yep. Yeah. he's proved himself this season. Exactly. They both so get Raj, give us your Eagles take. Yeah. So I mean, we're being counted as underdogs once again. What? According to who? Instagram comments calling up. We, we're being called <laughs> what? Listen, listen. <laughs> You're letting the Instagram. You track. are so soft. <laughs> You're trying to reach the bottom of the barrel to put a chip on your shoulder. You were the, had the best <laughs> record in the league. You were nearly undefeated for the longest time. Yeah. And you are saying you're underdogs? You're the one seed. Let me have 2018 vibes again. Okay? No! You don't get 2018 from this. You don't get to be the underdog. All right, fine. I won't, yeah, I won't take like you like seven point yeah. favorites. Yeah. Like, I'm checking the line right now. I want... <laughs> Shut up. Boston's got any tough touchdowns for Oh, no, Boston's Hammer. Okay. They're seven and a half point favorites. <laughs> Boston's got plus over six. Oh, yeah, points. that's uh, yeah. We can't we can't give out betting advice, but Hammer Boston's got money line against the Giants always. <laughs> one of, <laughs> one of the, the Giants DC said that Boston Scott wasn't a Giants killer, and I was like, dog, that's just like inaccurate. <laughs> he has yeah. 10 of his 18 touchdowns against the Giants. Against the Giants. Yeah. Yes. Wow. He's literally the, like a third string running back, only does well against the Giants. Yo, I thought time. that was Miles Sanders. No, My, no, Miles is one. He's Kenneth Gainwell is two. No, I thought Miles Sanders. Miles is not the no, no, Giants. No, it's Boston Scott. Yeah, yeah, okay. He only scores touchdowns against the Giants. Yeah. Okay, but legitimately though, I the, the Eagles. We have the weapons. We have the potential. We have everything we need to take us to the Super Bowl. But game by game, we have everything we need to win this game. Yep. All we have to do is not underestimate Danny Jones. Yeah. Don't not under. Well, we don't. We want. We're not going to underestimate Saquon, but no. contain him. Yep. Yeah. And just make sure our D-backs, Slay and, um, I said the word. James Bradbury. James oh, Bradbury. I thought you didn't know the other. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, caught, I said the word, but whatever. Oh. Bradbury and Slay, as long as they can contain your receivers, mm-hmm. I think we'll be okay. Yeah. And as long, and we have way too much talent on the D-line not to get a pass rush in. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's the keys for us to win the game. And the mm-hmm. offense, as long as we can keep rolling like we've been all season, we'll be good. Yep. Take it. Yeah. I mean, I think it's Eagles win. Um... <clears throat> I mean, yeah, I think it's yeah. pretty straightforward. Yeah. I, think, yeah. I think I think Daniel Jones is kind of giving me like Kirk Cousins vibes, like low key. No, 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 no. I'll say it this because of this. I think Daniel Jones is going to be in a situation similar to Kirk Cousins, where Kirk Cousins is not like elite, but he plays well enough each year to keep himself as the starter. I think Daniel Jones is going to be in that. Position. Well, listen, I think Kirk Cousins. Look, Jacob. Daniel Jones just had a great year. Kirk Cousins he's, is the definition of a mediocre quarterback, though. But he's good enough each year to just barely keep himself out of the job. I think, I think we need to see more from Daniel Jones. I mean, I think, listen, Kirk Cousins has not even had a good playoff history, and mm-hmm. right now Daniel Jones has one good playoff game. So, How like, old is Danny Dodds? I think he's like 25. Jones, yeah. like he's still young, yeah. Yeah, so. Um, I think he's going to be like that. This is the worst game of the weekend, in my opinion. Giants, I think Giants. It's the most lopsided. I think it's the most. um, Even though the Chiefs are eight and a half point favorites, I would hammer Jags on that. That's just a huge line. Um, Giants, Eagles, seven and a half point line. I think this could get ugly. Now, there's a world in which it stays close, but. It could get ugly. I think the Eagles slept walk in week 17 against the the Giants. Like, the Giants put up a good fight with their backups, but it was like a weird game where the Eagles were super banged up and they were trying to get out of there. And the last time they played at full strength, for the most part, some injuries on both sides, the Eagles whacked the Giants. Okay, you cannot say full strength. We were down everybody. And you can keep that in. I don't care. (laughs) We were down to our seventh String receiver, <laughs> you still that. you still don't have you still don't have any receivers. Yeah, so those same. Oh yeah, these teams are both super healthy. We were down like everybody. Yeah, on but so defense. were the Eagles. Were down people too. Who were you down? We were down Jordan Davis, Robert Quinn. We were down Robert Quinn's a rotational guy. 
But he, we just traded for him. He's a pro, ex Pro Bowl pass rusher. Yeah, but he's a rotational guy. He's still Justin, important. We cannot take the high road on this. You There's can't. We can say. I'm no. saying we. We whacked the Giants last time we did. Yes, well, yes, we did, but we cannot take so, the high road. I think this game we were injured. That's fine. I think this game's gonna get. I think this game really has the potential to get ugly, especially if Jalen Hurts is playing well. Now the Eagles injury stuff is gonna have a little bit of an effect on it. I don't know if Lane Johnson is playing. Okay. Um, if he's, really, he uh, tore his abdominal muscle. It's, a, it's not. It, it doesn't need surgery. To it's a really rough injury. I yeah. would if this game gets any. Like time where we're up by like ten, I would pull the guy because you if, don't he, if he re tears it, man, he's out for the rest. But yeah. like Kayvon Thibodeau can have a really good day if Lane Johnson's out. Yeah. Kayvon Thib- like data shows that if Lane Johnson's in, Kayvon Thibodeau is going to do nothing the whole yeah. game. Yeah, um, Lane Johnson's simply going to shut him down. But if Lane Johnson's not playing and you have a backup in there, I think Kayvon Thibodeau could really disrupt that. And if Jalen Hurts is under pressure, I don't know what he looks like with his shoulder. He's not on the injury report, but it doesn't mean he's still not feeling his shoulder. Exactly. Yeah. I don't know if he's gotten injections or anything. So. That's the only thing that scares me. But otherwise, I think the Giants are really going to struggle to get a good um, get a good offense going. Like I, I think the Giants score under twenty your points. Line is hurt right now. Uh, it would be our right side. So Sam Reddick's favorite side. Yeah. <laughs> you literally said the other thing the other day. No, I... you did. You said Hassan Reddick's. Um, you said he rushes up the middle. No, I said the right. I never, I know we. Have, why would Hassan Reddick rush up the okay. middle? He's an outside dude. Hassan Reddick is on the right side of the defensive line, right? He rushes the right side of the O line. No, he rushes the left side of the O line. Right side on defense. I, that's side, that's uh, Andrew Thomas. That's the All Pro. I'm sorry. <laughs> Andrew <laughs> Thomas is an All Pro. Huh? Yes. Wow. He's been crazy. Yeah. He is, Giants. Giants have done a good job he's, developing. He's second team All Pro only because Trent Williams exists. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. But he's 99 in bad places. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. Um, picks. Oh, for the game? For the game, yeah. It's like, going to be Eagles. 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 Yeah. All right. Yeah, Eagles by 14. Would you like a spread or something? I mean, like, yeah, you want to give me your want to give me your prediction how the game's going to turn out. Um, I'm going to say Eagles if it's like, I'm going to go Eagles minus 10. I say Eagles minus 7.5. I don't want to count the Giants out. I'm going to say, I'm going to give a score. I'd say it'll be like... Like thirty one seventeen, mm-hmm. something yeah. like that. Yeah, I'm really excited to see how the Eagles do their defense. They've been they haven't been doing a good job scheming defenses recently. Like mm-hmm. guys running up in middle field. I don't know if that's just like lazy, but I mean they've had two weeks to really prepare for this game. Yeah, um, and think about that. So it'll be interesting to see. Again, I think the worst game of the weekend. Um, at least the Jags Chiefs. Like it could be a blowout, but like I think there's some fun storylines there. Yeah. Um, I don't really think anyone cares about this game, but a game that people do really care about is Bengals at Bills because this, <laughs> this is the game that we were supposed to have oh a couple weeks God. ago with an unfortunate injury to Jamar Hamlin. Um, we get it again it's in Buffalo. Um, I'll get a weather report in a second, but the big question is, is Jamar Hamlin showing up in the game? <laughs> Dude, this, I, I saw this meme saying the NFL strip right with the yeah. Jamar Hamlin suits up in the Yeah, suits up in plays, yeah. <laughs> he goes in on a, on a three safety blitz. <laughs> Kills the, yeah. No, he just tees off on T. Higgins. Yeah, no yeah reason. literally, he just blindsides him, even though he said he has no ill will towards him. Just for some reason, he does. Oh, my God. Yeah, I mean... It's gonna. I mean, it looks like a great game. Some potential snow in Buffalo. I mean, when snow is there game. not? But I mean, like the thing is, like it looked like it was gonna be a good game a couple weeks ago. It still looks like it's gonna be yep. a really good yeah. game now, um, because the Bills do not look like world beaters anymore. Mm-hmm. They clearly have flaws that you can exploit if you get Josh Allen off his rocker and you start hitting him early and often. He throws picks. Yeah. Yeah. He does. Like he throws picks. And, form. and I think that the Bengals pass rush has enough talent, maybe not to get a bunch of yeah. sacks, but at least to pressure him enough. I think people underrate the Bengals defense. Like I think every time they're just like, oh, it's just Joe, Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, Joe Mixon. Their defense is legit. Like they're not like they're not like 49ers good, but, but they're like, yeah. they're a solid good defense. Like yeah. people underestimate like their ability to do I mean, they got the f- two fumbles. I think in that Ravens game, yeah. that pretty much like their defense is the only reason they won the Ravens game. Yeah, a hundred percent. The Bengals offense did not look good. Thoughts on Eli Apple? No, well, no, he's a no. bum. He's horrible. <laughs> we all can agree. He don't like Eli <laughs> Apple. Okay, he is the worst. I don't like him because he was a bust on the Giants. <laughs> he's a bum. Who cares? But um, yeah, this is. I mean, there's not really much to say because it's like it's going to be a really good game. It's going to yeah. come down to the offenses mm-hmm. who can who has the better arm that day. Yep. Like I. Yeah, Raj? That's going to be a shootout. Shootout? Yeah, I think it's going to be a shootout, too. I think it's going to be a shootout. Yeah, let me look at the over-under for this game. My parlay's going to go crazy for that game. Oh, my God. Like, 
everybody anytime touchdown. <laughs> over under 48 and a half, I would hit. That's, I hit. Over. That's, That's over. That's an yeah. easy over. over. I mean, you, we don't know I'd that. Have to I mean, it, over like right after the line. <laughs> but. Thoughts? Oh, I mean, I think this would be the game of the week, regardless of like the store, like mm-hmm. the DeMar mm-hmm. Hamlin situation. When, like, when, when is it? Is this it is the uh, night, afternoon right? game on Sunday. Afternoon? Oh. What's Sunday oh, night? The Cowboys Niners, yeah. yeah. That's, oh, yeah that makes that's sense. America's yeah. team. But no, this is easily the game <laughs> of the week. Um, I think Trey Hendrickson is going to have to have a legacy game. Yeah. He's going to have to. What pissed me off about Josh Allen is um, I think it was against the Dolphins where he was pushing and uh, shoving someone. Mm-hmm. Then, um, because like I think he just Christian like, Wilkins yeah, went yeah, that that's situation. and then he's a punk for that. Yeah. He starts just, pushing and shoving, then everybody starts attacking Christian uh Wilkins. And I don't like him because he played at Clemson. But he's still well, granted he did like at first but, I think he was trying so Christian Wilkins I think was trying just to get in front of him. He did end up hitting him kind of hard when he yeah. didn't need to. What are you told but, you're a defensive line you were a defensive lineman when there's a pick, what are you supposed to do? If you tell me kill the that your coach, what is wrong with you? Know? You're supposed to go block the quarterback. Yeah, block. <laughs> you're a menace. That's what we're supposed to. Do. That's what I have to go kill the quarterback. Not kill the quarterback. But you're That's what to, you just I said. I don't. I don't, I don't, have, I don't have a problem with anything Josh Allen did. Like he's the quarterback. If he wants to go, like if he wants to go, like shove a guy and then run away. Like I don't really he's care. A like two hundred fifty pound quarterback, and he like okay, decides not two fifty. First of all, <laughs> he's like two like thirty something. Okay, well, he's, a huge, he's, a, he's a big guy. He's a huge quarterback. Yeah. I didn't like that he did that. I thought it was just a, kind of a weak move to start the altercation and then just walk away. Well, he didn't start it. He was very heavily well, involved. Well, because he hit the guy back? He was heavily involved in the altercation. I think he should have at least stayed there instead of letting his entire team. Yeah, like, well, yeah, stay in there, get injured. I, I, get I would at least stay a little bit after Josh, he literally just After Josh off. Allen's UCL injury this this year, don't I, don't risk I don't think he's. I don't think it's worth staying there. Anyways, I think that um, winner of this game, I think, probably will make the Super Bowl. Um, yeah. All I can and tell, all I can tell you is the Chiefs do not want to see the Bengals. The Chiefs do not want to see the Bengals. I also I don't want to see the Chiefs of, in the Super Bowl. So let's go Bengals. I'm kind of drawn to taking the Bengals in this game. I don't even yeah. remember what my projection was. I think the playoffs. I think I'd take the Bengals too. Yeah, but the I'm, way that they've been playing. Because I, I think yeah. the last game their offense wasn't good, and I think they're pissed. Mm-hmm. And their defense showed that they can like lock some teams mm-hmm. down. Yep. I, I think the Bills might be um, somewhat emotional for the game yeah. because of Demar. It's either they're going to come and drop fifty on them, or they're not going. Yeah, it's going to be one or the other. And like I feel like last week the Bengals they played down to the Ravens level. I think that's what. Well, happened so do the last Bills. Week. But well, well yeah. listen, I think we like I think people are under like they're like Ravens don't have Lamar Jackson. The Ravens have a outstanding defense, so like. And they've always played the, a division rival and the Bengals tough. So I think people like looked at that game. And they're like, oh, the, like the Bengals didn't have the best performance of the year. But like the Ravens team, besides from quarterback and wide receiver, is really good. Yeah. So I think people sometimes just like, downplay how good the Ravens are. The Ravens were a nine and like a nine and seven, ten and six football team. team. Yeah. So they're a very solid football team. So I think people are like, and it's a playoff game. It is what it is. Um, the key for the Bengals is getting constant pressure. Josh yes. Allen fumbled the ball three times, three times against the Dolphins. Single handedly kept Miami in the game with mm. Skylar Thompson at quarterback. So yeah. if they can, they need the blitz. They need to get to the quarterback. <laughs> <Skinny Travis Kelsey. laughs> yeah. And they need, like, like you said, uh, Trey Henderson has had a great game. He has Legacy to. game. He yeah. Has to. yeah. He like get Josh Allen pressured, make him fumble the ball once or twice. If he starts getting nervous in that pocket and jittery, he's going to throw the ball downfield. He's going to get picked off. And if you start creating one, two, three turnovers, the game's over. You yeah, can't give yeah. the ball back to Joe Burrow three times in a game. So, And I think uh, T. Higgins is going to have a really good game. I think they're going to do a lot to stop Jamar Chase. And yeah. I think he's going to get a lot of underneath stuff. And they're going to be like, it's going to be another – like T. Higgins had a big playoff game last year where he was just like yeah, catching everything down. Yeah, and I think it's going to be a game. And it'll be a great moment when Jamar Hamlin's in the, in the stadium. Yes. So we all, we're all happy he is back. But the game that apparently everyone wants to see on Sunday night is Cowboys 49ers, although – I think this is the game I'm least interested in this weekend. Um, Why you're not interested in watching your favorite team? Nope. Your favorite team. Huh. But like actually, though, like the Cowboys, like I feel like they're gonna be they're just gonna go in so overhyped because they beat a geriatric quarterback, <laughs> uh, a running back who is not 40 years old but looks like it. Who? Leonard, Leonard Fournette. 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 Oh yeah. He Bowling was, ball. Yeah. yeah. Playoff Lenny. <laughs> But, I mean, I feel like the Cowboys are going to go in here. Well, they know not to underestimate the Niners, but I feel like they're... <laughs> 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 they're literally going to go in there. 
literally the best team. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm just <laughs> making that game. It's insane, but like, it's like, I feel like the Cowboys are going to ride this high. Actually, Mike McCarthy would do that. Mike McCarthy would go there like, they're the underdogs. <laughs> We're better than them. And they just get steamrolled. <laughs> I, I feel like the Cowboys are going to try to ride this train of where they like beat up on a very bad football team. The entire division should be relegated. Mm-hmm. But I don't. I I I think the Niners are going to kill the Cowboys this week. Okay. I hope they do. I really because obviously I hate the Cowboys, but like I think because the defense because the Tampa Bay defense was not good. Yeah. Period. It was yeah. awful all game, and they are going against the best defense in the league. Mm-hmm. Like. I, that offensive line. Well, so I have an interesting note yes, here. Yeah, yeah. The secondary for the 49ers has not been great. They let DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett have a crazy second quarter on them. That's true. In that game. Are you concerned at all about the 49ers secondary as it pertains to this game? Because, I mean, the Cowboys don't have a crazy offense, but they have um, uh, Schultz, 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 they have Schultz and they have yeah. um, C.D. Lamb at wide receiver. The only thing that I'd say with that is the I think the 49ers underestimated the Seahawks. Mm. I think they really did mm. because the Seahawks had, they essentially had no right being yeah. in there. Like they got in because some team lost mm. and like they got in there or whatever, but I don't think they're going to under, underestimate the Cowboys. And the thing is about the Cowboys is that they need the play action. Yeah. And that front seven for the 49ers is absurd. Yeah. Like it is the best in football, mm. hands down, bar none. Yeah. Like there's no way they're going to be able to get a true play action. Mm-hmm. Cause when you have Bosa on one side, the entire defensive line is solid. And then two essentially all pro linebackers mm-hmm. with um, Dre Greenlaw and yeah. 54. Fred Warner. Fred Warner, Fred Warner yeah. the actual all pro. Those two are <laughs> those two are absolute monsters. Yeah. Like there's no way that they're gonna be able to get mm-hmm. that action. Except when he ruined my car my Who? Fred Warner. I think he, was he the one that hit Gino? No. Um, that, was, that was Jimmy Ward. Ah, uh, yeah. Thanks, mm-hmm. Jimmy Ward. I think the um Part of the issue that the Bucks had is they couldn't really get that much pressure on Tom Brady. Exactly. On yeah. Dak Prescott. Yeah. yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> that's not <laughs> happening. Let's be clear. I picked the Niners to win the Super Bowl. I think the like it's crazy. Like I really understand how they can have Brock Purdy a quarterback. He's playing great, yeah. but by no means should he be doing this well. Yeah, he no. shouldn't be doing this well. He's not that. He's not an elite quarterback by any stretch because he didn't do that against good competition. <laughs> Uh, I mean, he's playing really well, but I can't go. I, I think an elite quarterback. I hear what you're saying. Right I think now. people are underestimating his four years. At Iowa. Iowa State's not like a small. Pro- they're not a good program, but they're not a small program. They play like legit teams every year. He was there for four years. <laughs> they he was about Iowa State. State. They like, no, they Iowa are, State was never good, but they played against good opponents. So it's like Brock Purdy saw guys who were going to be playing in the NFL. So I'm not saying Brock Purdy's like a great quarterback, but I'm saying he's played big games before. It's not like yeah, Brock Purdy's no, played like he's played bigger opponents than like. You're like the guy you hate, Zach Wilson. Like, he <laughs> yeah. plays in a tougher like conference than yeah. Zach Wilson yeah. played in. So I think like like he was playing against guys who would make the NFL and be like mm-hmm. trying to rush rush him in these games. So I think like he has experience in these type of moments. And the thing is, he was that. a little bit shaky during the first part of the Seahawks game, but then once he started to get into the rhythm, he was fine. Yeah. No, I agree with you on that. I mean, still Iowa State was. I think maybe they had a year, maybe. But other than that, I mean. Yeah. No, nah, they were not yeah. like that. They weren't that great, but. Um, I mean, he's been doing really well. Um, I mean, the Niners, I just don't understand, like, how they can still be this good when they've had three quarterbacks. It's just been three, right? Yes. Okay, yeah. so they've had three different starting mm-hmm. quarterbacks. Niners win. Niners win whoever they play against next week. Niners probably win the Super Bowl. We'll, yeah. cover, we'll cover that next week. <laughs> yeah. What's really exciting, I think, for me is, like, I'm excited to see what Kyle Shanahan does with Micah Parsons. Like, how he, like, because he's, he's going to take him out of the game. Yeah. They're going to run the ball to the left a lot. They're not, they're gonna have a good protection on the right. I'm very like very because he's not rushing on Trent Williams' side. There's no way. Yeah. So um, I'm very curious to see what he's gonna do because I feel like this is gonna be a game where everyone's like, "Where's Micah Parsons at?" And he's just got like three guys on him, just exactly. like just getting laying on top yeah. of him. Yeah, and you're just gonna be like, "Wow, they really took him out of the game." Yeah. Um, the Cowboys can't get behind in this game. If they no, get behind, they're, they're screwed. But I think if the Cowboys can come out, have a really good first drive where they draw up some really creative plays, try to get like up seven zero seven zip. I think they can put pressure on the 49ers because they're going to have to force Brock Purdy to go down the field. They, they need to force them to a shootout. Yeah, and I think that's what they need to do. I don't think they'll do it, but I do think this game will be a, a little bit closer than we expect. The Cowboys have a solid roster. Exactly. Um, and there's going to be – I mean, 49ers have a good fan base. There's, it's not going to be a complete washout of 49ers fans. Cowboys fans are all over the place yeah. for God knows what reason. <laughs> um, but so I think this game will be good, but – Brock Purdy is going to bring him to the NFC Championship game. Yeah, Brock Purdy, CMC, Debo Samuel, George Kittle. Brandon uh, Ayuk. Brandon Ayuk. <laughs> <laughs> Just all of the, all the boys. Um, Elijah Mitchell. 
predictions? Oh, check. Oh, just check. Um, I'm saying, I mean, yeah, obviously Niners. Like, they just have so many guys. Yeah, they're going to win by two touchdowns. Um, yeah, at least two touchdowns. So you think it's the blowout of the week? I think it's going to be a blowout. I'm going to give the Cowboys some credit. I'm going to say it's going to be like 35-21. 35-21. Yeah. I'll go like... Is that two touchdowns? Yeah. 17. <laughs> 17. Well, no, but I'm saying they're going to score more points. <laughs> okay. 17 yeah. to 23. They're not, they're not just scoring Got points. it. Yeah. 17, 17 to 23. I I don't I think this could be a game where the Cowboys score late like they're down oh, thirteen well, they just score garbage they time. score seven right, late and then um because like they're just throwing a bomb C D Lamb catches a deep pass they do an onside kick 49ers recover they kneel the ball out I and see. it looks closer than it is um if the Cowboys were to win though obviously Micah Parsons has to have a legacy game yeah Tony Pollard and has to have, Zeke they have both, they have to have both have that way they have to be running over those yeah. backers. and obviously Dak Prescott and I yeah. think that happens. I think this will be a really interesting game for Mike McCarthy because he's already coming back. And I think people have honestly given him a lot of crap on that team for Cowboys having like some decent seat. They've strung together a decent chunk of seasons with Mike McCarthy. So I'll be interested because like if they won this game, all the Mike, all the Mike McCarthy haters, which is pretty much everyone, like yeah. no one likes the guy. Yeah. And like, it's all just going to be quiet. Cause I mean, yeah. Jerry Jones said he's not getting rid of the guy. And like, I don't understand why they would like, I understand like where Mike McCarthy falls short, but like, I don't know. I made the playoffs and won a game. I wouldn't. I wouldn't fire I my mean, coach. At the end of the day, this is probably just going to come down to Mike McCarthy time management. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, he doesn't pull the exact same Imagine thing as last time. It happens, <laughs> it happens again where they just lose. Yeah. <laughs> Do the time management. That would be very interesting. But yes. any last thoughts on the NFL this week? No. Go Eagles. Go Bengals. <laughs> that has been this episode of this week in sports. We're all looking forward to a good NFL week. Hopefully, the games are like interesting and not just like a disappointment that would really suck but if you like what you saw here make sure you drop a like and subscribe we have another episode that comes out where we kind of just talk about our daily lives and what's ever on our mind so if you like this episode go check that out and otherwise we'll see you next time on the lost after podcast